and I can do them when that's not true at all. And let me tell you why. There's so many people out there willing to give. <gasps> like seriously guys, it is so simple. But I'm so frustrated. This is turmeric tea, by the way. Alrighty, so welcome. If you don't know who I am, hi, I am Sarah Swift. I am 20, I had to think about it. I'm 21 years old, and I'm currently a musical theater major at St. Houston State University in Texas. So I came on here because I've had kind of a slow realization recently, just about life in general, that I think would be useful to share, especially as a college student. I think this is applicable to almost every other college student. And I think it's life changing. Of course, there's so many different forms of motivation on YouTube out there, different ways of telling you you can pursue your dreams and that why should you wait but it's easy to take those kind of ideas like oh well maybe someone else can do it but not me and so that's the focus of this video why you need to be pursuing your dreams now rather than later so first off like I said um, other people out there other videos will say yeah you need to just go for your dreams but it's very easy to fall into the mindset of yeah but and the but can mean so many different things. A lot of times we think that, yes, I, I can do these things. I know I can. And I can do them when I have or I am blank. This could mean for a lot of people when I move into a bigger place, when I get that job, when I graduate from high school or from college. Um, and th these are some barriers that I've been facing in my own life. A lot of the things that I could do around my home I live in a small apartment, a cheap apartment, as college kids usually do, and motivation is low when you don't have the perfect apartment. You can't DIY it exactly the way you see it, paint the walls, um, have nice furniture because I don't have the funds or I don't have the clothes, and also just waiting like, oh, I don't have the time and the money and I'll have that once I graduate college. That seems like a pretty basic mindset that I'm sure most of us can relate to, right? Well, that's not true at all, and let me tell you why. First off, why I have come to this realization. It all starts a couple of weeks ago at the Miss Sam Houston pageant. So I'm not a pageant girl, but I have a friend, Gabby, from um, Abilene Christian University. She's competed in the Miss America system for a couple years now, and she loves it. She's also a musical theater major, and she got me to do the Miss Anderson pageant. There's scholarships involved, and you get to perform on stage, so why not, right? Seems perfect. Um, and this process was more just a way for a fun thing to do on campus, but it actually taught me a lot of things. First off, a really big part of the pageant system, if you're unfamiliar with it, other than the typical things like the dresses and the talent and the world peace. I would have to say world peace. Definitely world peace. That's easy. World peace. That you typically know from society. But another big aspect of it is the community service and having a social impact, which is now rebranded as service impact. But it's about finding something that you care about, that you want to share with the world, and making it happen. Now the point of the Miss America system and pageants is to give young women a platform to be able to share these things. But the thing is, is when you compete, you haven't done any of those things. You have, how are you supposed to compete if you don't have proof of you going and already doing these things in the community? Even though this gives you a platform to talk about it, you have to have already been talking about it. So in order to compete, I had to go pursue those things. And I found that it's a lot easier than you might think. Now this specific example is community service. In high school, I grew up in an area, very fortunate that lots of people volunteered, lots of people wanted to volunteer, and thus it was very hard to find volunteering opportunities. So 
I just always assumed that volunteering was more of a burden. You feel like, hey, do you have anything I can volunteer for? And it's not really what it's supposed to be. It's not working in a soup kitchen like you might see in a Hallmark movie. I was just struggling a lot to find how this works and how to make things happen without forcing it and, and being more of a nuisance than anything. So what I found through this process is really all it takes is planning and action. Now, are you necessarily going to get the results that you might have with a platform or with the money or with the age and the friends? Not necessarily, but a lot of it, all it is is action. People create these platforms and then they create organizations. My friend Gabby, like I said, she has Why Dyslexia Matters. And so she has a whole organization where she goes around, talk to schools, and explains dyslexia, which she has, and she creates a need and she, therefore she can actually go out into the community, has things to talk about, something that she cares about, and she makes it happen. And so mine was heart health. I love everything health, wellness, fitness, and especially since that ties so much into musical theater. I, anywho, discussion for another time, but when I was trying to find things to do around campus, at first I was like, oh, I need to partner with the program council or student activities, and it's gonna be really hard to do. But a lot of things you can do on your own, it just takes planning, like I said, and then publicizing. Publicizing marketing? You know what I mean. I had a heart walk I did. Um, it was a walk for heart health because it was heart health month. And literally, I was like, okay, here's an idea. Okay, where do I want it to happen? Created a map on the map of Sam Houston, created the, the route that we would go, picked a date, and then I just created posters and I posted it around. And that's literally all it took. Like, a lot of people would get prohibited because of money, but really there are so many people out there willing to give. You just have to have the right reasons and be professional and approach people about it. Talk to them about it. Sponsorship, as you can see through the pageant system, is really all that hard. And also with Instagram, how many people do you see sponsored with their, their clothes? I mean, all it takes is them reaching out and being like, hey, I like your clothes. I think that I have this following and people would buy from you if you sponsor me. And then they're like, yeah, sure, here you go. That's literally it. So throughout this, this whole process, it just opened my eyes to how many things you can achieve by just doing it yourself. Um, especially with theater, I'm in a very group mindset. Like you can't be in a show without other actors, without directors, without techies. And it's such a group process that you get in the mindset of, I can't really do anything on my own. And this pageant system has shown me that, yes, you can. What I'm here to tell you is, all it really takes is to start. Okay. Sorry, I have, I have notes and I accidentally deleted them. Another example, I've been really interested in real estate. I've always been like researching it, just kind of like, for fun, not really like seriously, um, throughout college. Um, recently it's been like, oh, how do I create an Airbnb? Because like, I'm like, someday when I have money, that would be a great source of income. But what I found through watching other creators on YouTube and research online is that most of these people aren't funding these projects themselves. Maybe I'm dumb, but if you didn't know this, I'm telling you, um, you can go to the bank propose an idea and get a loan. I mean, I know that loans exist for like mortgages for cars, but like for businesses, you can get a loan if you have a good enough idea and you have the preparation put in and you have like, if you can prove to them why it's a good idea, they'll give you all the money you need. And then you have however long it takes once you've built that business up or bought that property to remake the money and pay it back. So you essentially, are paying nothing. It's the money that you make from the business after getting that loan to repay the loan. It's all someone else's money. I mean, I'm sure that there are other expenses that some people pro provide themselves, but in general, any sort of business idea, you can literally do it yourself. It just takes hard work, preparation, and actually doing it. Action. It, it blew my mind. Um, if you knew that, I'm sorry if I seemed absolutely dumb, but 
<laughs> this was new for me. Uh, my last point I want to make is a lot of this fear I feel like really stems from college students because in high school depending on what kind of family you come from and your upbringing you have your family to depend upon any of your ideas things you want to do you can get support especially from schools high schools middle schools um, different community groups par other parents your parents grandparents there's so many ways to have support and then suddenly go to college and you're on your own I mean I'm sure a lot of people have help from their parents for different things but in general that's really when you start doing things on your own and suddenly you're a broke college kid. You don't have money. You're having to figure out how to pay for your living expenses, how to have a job when you also have classes and make enough money to pay those expenses. College is difficult in so many ways, <laughs> just living wise. And so it's for college kids, it's really easy to get into the mindset of, I can do this. I can achieve this dream, this dream, this dream once I graduate. Like, for example, if it's real estate, if you want to create an Airbnb, ah, uh, once I have a real job and I can support the endeavor and I have the time, that'll be after graduation. Or, because a lot of it is money and a lot of it is time, and those two things you don't have very much of in college. And so I think a lot of people get deterred. Like I said before with the loan thing or with the pageants, you don't need money and you don't necessarily need that much time. It just takes preparation and action. That's literally all it is, preparation and action. I mean, for example, this YouTube space. I started YouTube in 2020 and then once I got to college, it basically didn't happen. Um, I have like very few videos that I published. Even though I truly love this art form, I'm a very artistic person as you can tell, musical theater. I love YouTube, but I don't have the time. It, I don't. I, I really don't. But I had the idea for this video and I was like, you know what? I just need to make time to do it. Right now it is currently Saturday. I'm home alone, so I have a whole day to myself. I have recorded an Instagram reel of a morning routine. I took Instagram photos by myself. I have just with this setup that I have right now, I recorded a video for a project in class and I'm gonna be editing it just like a YouTube video. So I was like, why not just also record another actual YouTube video and edit it all in the same day? <laughs> Bashing, wow, concept. It just takes a plan and action. Like seriously guys, it is so simple. And what I'm telling you is Pursue your dreams, no matter what it is. If it's some sort of business and you're waiting till after college, start it as a side hustle. If it's just showing up on social media and you're like, oh, I don't, this is nothing, my apartment, it sucks, it's dirty all the time, I can't, I don't have white walls. Just do it anyways. I, I was talking earlier on the Instagram about romanticizing your life and it's hard when you don't think you have everything, but that's all it takes. It's mindset. Romanticize it anyways. Romanticize the process. Romanticize that you're not there yet. And it's beautiful that you're at where you're at. And someday when you've achieved your dreams, you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, that was such a great time before I hit it big and I was just working hard because I had an idea. It's beautiful. And it's really hard to notice that now from where you're at and that's something I work on every day and I try to express gratitude for where I am in the process but I'm a very future oriented person and it's difficult. It is difficult but do it. What's stopping you from doing it now? Why wait? There's no need to wait because then you could end up in the rut of always waiting for the next thing and it's never gonna happen. That's what I wanted to share with you guys. I really think that waiting is only gonna hurt you and trying now can't hurt you. It can only help you, so why wouldn't you? So why wouldn't you? You don't need money. You don't need time. You don't need a lot of things. You just need yourself and your mind. Thank you guys for, if you've watched this 
far into the video. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I've kind of repeated myself several times, but I hope this helps someone out there. I hope that this helps you realize that your dreams matter. They matter even now and that you should be going after them now. And yeah, this is also just a promise to myself to try a little harder and to not wait so much. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, remember to be thankful, remember to be positive and to look for the good in life and to start doing things now. Um, if you like this video, let me know. I can link some of my vlog playlists. If you've never seen me before, I think I'm pretty cool. And if you think I'm pretty cool, then I have a good reason to keep going. So let me know, hit that like button. And um, yeah, if you think someone else would benefit from this, please share it with them, share the message. Doesn't have to be me, just let them know.